Today we are continuing our M gram testing. These were some half pans that I filled with M gram watercolors about a week ago. I highly recommend you check out that first review. A lot of information about this brand in that review that will be beneficial for you guys from here on out. I broke it up into two segments because it was getting a little bit long. So these have had about a week to dry. These have a honey binder rather than a gum Arabic binder. And while they did lose some mass, they are still somewhat soft and a little sticky to the touch and some colors more so than other colors. So I have a feeling these are not really gonna require a lot of activation. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take a synthetic and I'm just looking for a decent synthetic right now and I'm going to swatch them. So here on the top row is a swatch with the colors directly from the tomb. Tomb, wow, tube. And this is Terra Rosa, and it's a little unimpressive. It seemed to have separated out over time, and it's a little sticky to the touch. In fact, all of these dots are a little sticky to the touch. The only one that isn't is the gouache, which is this color over here. And I am not going to pre-activate these. I'm just going to go ahead and start painting, since so many of them are still very soft and malleable to the touch. These have had a chance to dry. I went ahead and laid out the tube versions of these colors, even though these were from reconstituted half pants. And we're looking at azo yellow, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue, sap green, burnt sienna, terra rosa, I believe this is burnt umber, titanium white opaque, and this is the watercolor version, not the gouache, and then raw sienna, and this is the gouache version. And all of them reconstituted really nicely, so I am really excited to do the head-to-head -head comparisons with you guys. So in the first half of this review, we took seven different brands and we swatched them here. And they were all two versions of the watercolor with the exception of White Knights here. Today, we're going to do the same thing, but with the dried half pan forms. The reason I'm going to do this is I'm a watercolor comic painter. I don't paint these huge watercolor illustrations. I paint watercolor comic pages. In fact, you can check them out at 7inchcare.com or 7inchcare.tumblr.com. They're 11 by 14 inches and they usually consist of several small illustrations on a page. So what works best for me are kind of smaller self-contained kits. And while I've been reviewing my watercolors, it's really important to find find out if the two watercolors work just as well in dried half pans because I need that convenience. I need to be able to pick them up and get them cleaned away because not only do I paint watercolor comics, but I have cats and cat hair gets everywhere and cats will run through whatever they feel like running through. So having a portability factor is really important to me. So as I've been doing these reviews, I've been putting them in half pan or whole pan palettes so that they're a little easier for me to work with. So we're going to be looking at our M Graham set in this lovely fashionable Altoids tin, the Sennelier set in this Trader Joe's ginger mint tin. And this one's fun because I did magnets on the back. I have a tutorial for that. It's very easy to do. We have in this small pill box the Daniel Smith Essential 6 set and I'd also added Lunar Black and uh, probably a Burnt Sepia but we're only going to be testing these Essential 6. We're going to be looking at the already in pans White Knight set. We're going to be looking at a selection of core watercolors. We're going to be looking at Holbein watercolors. And we're going to be looking at Magello Mission Gold watercolors. And everything but the White Knights started out as two watercolors. So this is a really good test to see which of these hold up better, which of them retain their color a little bit better, anything like that, which would be important for those of us who work with both two watercolors and with half pan dehydrated watercolors. And I know that Core has recent rele recently released their own dried half pan set and mine is on back order. So I can't wait to do a head to head comparison between these homemade half pans and their official half pans in the near future. 
Now for the sake of my sanity, I am not swatching every color in the set. I am going to swatch them in the same order as the tubes. And we're basically going to replicate the same swatches from the first video. So that way, maybe we can hopefully one-to-one -one compare the colors. So I am going to start with the M. Graham paints. The M. Graham half pans still go down really luscious. The sap green is a little bit more opaque than I remember it being the first time we swatched, but I'm able to get a much even layer of color than I did in my first swatch video. So that's the M. Graham paints. Next, we're going to do the St. Petersburg White Knights. And I have an unboxing swatch video for these whole pans. And I'm not going to do every single one. I'm just gonna do a one-to-one -one color comparison as close as I can, the same way I did with the first video. And since our M. Grams kinda had a little pre-activation, I'm going to do the same for these just so that we can get kind of consistent color swatching. And all I did is I brushed on a little bit of water on the colors that I want to use. Now, to be fair, this isn't a perfect comparison because I am using a different brush. I am using a Cotman flat for this one, just because I thought it would fit in the pan and give me a nice even wash. And I believe I used probably I think I used a mop in the other video. I certainly think I used something roundish. So that might've been the inconsistent color. And I am doing this swatch test on fluid 100 watercolor paper, which is the same paper I did the other test on. And these black lines are to help test for opacity. And they were done with a Pintel pigment brush pen, which is waterproof once dry. The St. Petersburg whole pans are also very vivid, fairly saturated color. They didn't really require a lot of time to activate. They're very easy to use. Next, we're going to use the homemade core palette. And this is gonna be interesting because I have to think about where my colors are beforehand. And just like I did for the St. Petersburg, I'm gonna add just a little bit of water ahead of time to sort of give them a fair chance to activate. I have to think about where my colors are too. Spatial awareness is not always my strong suit. And I believe that is New Gamboge. Quinacridone Scarlet, I believe. And then I think I found my Ultramarine that I knew I had, because it's here in my palette. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a cheat and actually swatch the Ultramarine. But I'll do a small swatch of the Cobalt Blue something that I did in the other video. Then we had a Viridian Green. And then finally, the only color that, or at least the only color that shares a name in both sets, we have a burnt umber. And what's nice about this flat is it's exactly half pan size. So it makes for very convenient swatching on my end. Next is the Magello Mission Gold. We're gonna do the same thing we're going to pre-wet the colors we're actually going to use. And I'm actually turning around to look at my original swatch to make sure I get the same colors. Although with these, I didn't label the color names. I personally find, and this is probably not true for every artist, so this Take it with a grain of salt. But I find that
Yeah, okay. It's like I'm missing a color. There it is. I personally find that working from half pans, I also tend to get more saturated colors that I can paint with more consistently than their tube counterparts. Let me know in the comments below if you find that you have the same experience. I'm curious if it's, I don't know. I um, pursued a lot of my watercolor education through the School of Internet, which is Google. <laughs> and watching videos and reading reviews and attending hands-on creativity and other small local events. But um, even though I went to SCAD for my master's degree, that's in sequential art. They didn't, I didn't learn watercolor while at SCAD. So, you know, how I experience things might not be the norm when it comes to watercolor. So I'm curious... how much of what I'm experiencing is a shared experience or it's just like, that's just you, Becca, you're crazy. All right, Holbein 18 color. We're gonna do the same with the Holbein. And as with all the other colors, I'm going to pre-activate these first. I have to think about where things are. And these are not labeled as well. So um, you're gonna have to check the description below. I'm going to have a list of all the colors I use there. Oh, that's a phthalo. It's not the color I wanted. Or no, it is. It's the same one I swatched in the tube video, so I guess that's the color I wanted. And I'm still sort of figuring out what I want to do with large format color corrected watercolor scans because I would love to make those available for people since I know these videos aren't always 100% color accurate. You know, it's always hard to tell. So I'm kind of thinking because I am ending Natto Soup art and process blog in 2019, but I'd still like the color swatches to be available for people. I'm sort of thinking I might um, do something through my Patreon. So next is the Daniel Smith set. And I think I am going to, I could almost swatch all of them. I don't want to do any color mixing. So, and also some of these colors are a little grungy. So I'm going to clean them up just a little bit. I actually use this as my field, one of my field sets. And then this red is really more of a blue red. So I'm going to activate this red and then ultramarine and then, you know what? We'll do the blue as well. Um, really these swatches, it's not to compare the color. It's to compare the vibrancy, the saturation, how smoothly they go down. And this was not swatched in the um, other video. It was the primary triad was swatched because I have those in nice big tubes. And I have these in tubes somewhere. They've just gone for a little walk. But I promise I will do a video announcement, probably a blog post announcement, and probably something in a backer newsletter when I do decide on how I wanna host my large watercolor scans because they take up a lot of space. They eat up a lot of resources. I have to spend a lot of time color correcting because it's important that the colors are accurate. I wanna do a good job with it. It's also something I think should be archived so people can find that and be able to make an informed decision. What I might do is I might uh, make it a backer only thing, but make it very inexpensive to get at it, or even offer it as a community goal where if we hit a certain amount of money, I'm gonna make it public, sort of like I wanna do light fastness testing. So last, we're looking at the Sennelier colors. I don't wanna build a website around it. 
So basically, um, I was thinking I would scan them and put them on my Google Drive and then give um, my backers access to those files. But I'll figure it out and I'll let you guys know. It is important to me to do it. At some point, I'd love to do like an art supply wiki or something similar where we can collate reviews and swatches, not just mine, but you know, any artist who'd like to contribute their reviews. So it's all in one place. But if you guys have any thoughts for how I can um, distribute my swatches in a way that's fair to me as the person doing the work and fair to people interested in that information that doesn't necessarily put it behind a paywall, but it doesn't cost me to have it online, let me know in the comments below. Um, and if there is an art supply wiki out there that I'm not aware of because I was not informed of it, let me know that also because why reinvent the wheel when I can just collaborate? So just like when we swatched this set the first time, uh, this is not a one-to-one -one comparison. This is Sennelier's test set versus uh, M. Graham's test set basically. And both of them are, they're very interesting because they're both made with honey. And M. Graham claims that honey is why they're the best. They are, they do make beautiful watercolors. I am not contesting that. But to be honest, all of these watercolors that I've swatched, look at them, they're all beautiful. They're all vibrant. Um, some are a little more vibrant than others, but they all reconstituted from a dried half pan beautifully. Proof's gonna be in the pudding when they dry, but I really think they all have merit and they're all good watercolors. Okay guys, so here are all the sets we swatched. These colors are mostly dry. I'm gonna zoom in out of the thumbnail shot there so you guys can get a little bit better look at the colors. You know, maybe it's me. Maybe my tastes are suspect. I don't know. I'll let you guys be more of the judge. But all of these colors from all of these brands deliver vivid, consistent colors. There is some gradation for some colors, but that is a natural, normal part of watercolor. That's one of the selling points for Daniel Smith, like they're, the ultramarine there is made from lapis lazuli. It's a grady, uh, gradiating and sedimenting color. No, just sedimenting. You can gradiate it if you want. Um, but the point is like all of these colors seem to perform consistently well. I'm gonna do a lift test with these after this has had plenty of time to dry, just like I did with the other set of swatches. But I think what it's going to boil down to is what can you afford? What do you enjoy using? What works for you? The uh, M. Graham set of five. So these and this brown, I'm gonna do a field test for that soon. I'll probably use the half pan just because this is a more convenient form factor for me. But I have a feeling they're going to perform beautifully and they're gonna deliver rich, lovely color. But that's the same as the Sennelier. Their test five, which I honestly had my doubts that I'd be able to mix the colors I wanted, but you guys can check out the field test by clicking the card here. They deliver beautiful, vibrant color. You can't mix every single color you want, um, but this is just a test set. This is just to get you hooked. So same as the Daniel Smith Essential Six set. You guys can check out the field test for that as well beautiful, brilliant, clean mixes, nice color effects, just a joy to paint with. Same as the, or similar to, I should say, the Mission Gold watercolors. These are beautiful, beautiful, vibrant colors, an underrated brand. It's starting to get some of the recognition it deserves, but these are just gorgeous paints. You can't find them everywhere. I got mine on Amazon. I used to be able to find them at Jerry's. I went to Jerry's today and I didn't see them, but they're beautiful, clean colors. They mix well, they paint well. These are, these are great. So 
this isn't like a definitive anything, but I really feel like it's gonna boil down to what are your needs? How do you like to paint? Do you want your paint already in pans? Do you want to use a limited color selection for painting on the go? Are you looking for a lot of clean quinacridones, clean blues? Once I finished doing all my tests, reviewing all the watercolors I'm gonna review, I'm gonna do an overview video. But since I did so many swatches for the M. Graham uh, video, I thought it would just be a good opportunity to just say these are all really good options. And what it's gonna boil down to is how many colors do you wanna get at the onset? Do you want gum arabic? Do you want aquasol? Or do you want honey as your binder? Do you want to be able to work with real natural pigments, or not pigments, uh, natural minerals, like Daniel Smith has the whole fine tech line? Do you want really beautiful blues and really vivid quinacridone synthetics? Like, what are you looking for is what it's going to boil down to when we're talking about professional grade watercolors. So I am going to let these finish drying. I know I was, that was like my into video spiel, but no, I'm gonna let these finish drying. We're gonna do the lift test and then um, we're going to do our field test soon. So see you guys in a few days. All right, art nerds, these have had a chance to dry overnight. In case you've forgotten the order, we have M. Grams, we have White Knights, we have Core, we have Magello Mission Gold, we have Holbein, we have Daniel Smith, and we have Sennelier. So this is the half pan lift test. There shouldn't be much of a difference, but I wanna do it for consistency sake. In fact, I think it is a little less prone to lifting, at least the M grams with the half pan. Could be that um, I don't know, maybe since the we have allowed them to evaporate a little bit, the consistency changed and that kind of changed how the paint reacts. I don't normally do a lot of lifting when I watercolor, so it's not necessarily a property I personally prize, but I do know it's something a lot of watercolorists test for. So a little more lift resistant perhaps than the tube variation. And don't worry, at the end of the video, I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison of the two swatch sheets. Next up, we're looking at the White Knight. You should perform just about the same, because this is the only product where we use the half pans in both videos. So for these, nothing has changed. Next, we're doing core. And these seem pretty lift resistant and fairly staining. Next is Magello Mission Gold. Next is Holbein. And like I mentioned in the first video, these are all watercolors that I have tested here on the channel. So you can check out the unboxing swatches and field test right here. Also keep in, in mind that this is not a one-to-one -one comparison. These are not all the same pigments. And most of this was just kind of generalized to demonstrate um, brilliance, color depth, luminosity, those sort of properties. If you're interested in seeing a multi-brand one-to-one -one comparison where we go by the pigments used, let me know in the comments below. That can be something we work towards. You can either do it as my 10,000 subscriber reward or it can be a Patreon tier.
I did try to match colors when possible though. There's a lot of burnt umbers and a lot of ultramarines because those are kind of constants in most sets, but not every set has a sap green or an azo yellow or the same types of red. So that was Daniel Smith we just watched. Finally, we're on the Smellier set. That is the other honey-based watercolor in this lineup. And these are half pans made from their test set. And I owe my friend Kabocha a huge thank you because she sent me the test set as a birthday present. So that's how I'm able to share this with you guys. So thank you so much, Kabocha. I really do appreciate it. And it's a beautiful set. The colors are really nice. Very different from most mixing sets in that they include a Payne's Gray and Chinese Orange. But I really enjoyed using them in the field test. And I highly recommend you check that video out. All right, those are our half pan lifted swatches. We have to our left the from tube swatches with the exception of the white knights. To our right, we have the from homemade half pan set swatches, again, with the exception of the white knights, which came as whole pan. So they were already sort of semi-moist watercolors. I'm going to scan these for you later so you can see um, how they handle, see how they perform. I would say though, the results are pretty consistent. The differences seem to be the M grams are a little bit more prone to lifting when they're from the tube. The cores are a fair bit more prone to lifting when they're from the tube. And that seems to really be about it. Everything else, um, actually the whole binds are a little bit more prone to lifting when they're from the half pan, which is surprising. Um, other than that though, there doesn't really seem to be a lot of differences. I personally find working from the semi-dry half pans to be easier for me. I tend to get more consistent color swatches and I tend to get more consistent color coverage. As you can see, there are some color shifts, which I think is interesting. Uh, the core is a little bit darker from the tube and that seems to be pretty consistent. And with this one, I found the ultramarine. So I swatched that and then I did a little tiny swatch of the cobalt blue. And the colors in the Modelo Mission Gold seem to be just a little bit more intense from the tube as well. But otherwise there aren't significant differences and I would recommend using the paints in a way that benefits you as an artist. And um, if you do want a little more intense color then work from the tube. So um, what I was really testing for with all of this was to see how the M grams handled, how they reconstituted. I was a little concerned because they are honey-based watercolors, but the Sennelliers are also honey-based watercolors and they seem to dry out quite nicely. And the same seems to be true for the core watercolors. They seem to dry pretty nicely. The caveat is when you reconstitute them, they can be very prone to getting goopy fast. And I would let them dry thoroughly before you put them in a bag or you put them away because otherwise they may leak, they may run, um, they may reactivate. The gouache colors will reactivate from this semi-dry state, or actually this is the only gouache color. This is just white watercolor. Um, the gouache will reactivate from a semi-dry state and it handles quite a bit like a watercolor. So I included that so I would have a raw sienna in this palette. And the white has surprisingly good coverage for a white watercolor. I tested a lot of brands. I've endured a lot of white watercolor in my time. I'm not usually a fan, but the M Grams white watercolor seems to be a high quality product with good coverage. So I am happy to include it in my palette.
I want to thank you guys so much for watching the second half of my M Graham review. If you haven't checked out the first, I highly recommend it for context and for information. And I hope you guys will stick around for the field test. I'm going to work from the semi-dry half pans because that's convenient for me. And I look forward to sharing that with you guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I help hope help. I hope it was helpful, useful, and informative for you. I am a watercolor artist and illustrator, so my needs as a watercolorist are, I mean, a watercolor comic artist and illustrator. So I know my needs as a watercolorist differ from your average watercolorist. I hope my advice and what I showed you guys was helpful for your needs specifically as well. If you enjoyed my video, it would be amazing if you could tell a couple of friends about my channel. I'm trying to grow, I'm trying to develop, I'm trying to build an audience and that would be a huge help. And if you're looking for more watercolor tips, tricks and tutorials, not only consider subscribing for more of those here, but also head on over to natosoup.blogs Com for my wonderful watercolor basics series. If you're looking to enjoy some beautiful watercolor comics for free, I highly rec recommend you read my all ages watercolor comic, 7-inch Kara at 7inchkara.com and 7inchkara.tumblr.com. I can't wait to see you guys again and I hope you have a really great day. Bye guys.